Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and Apple released macOS 26.2 Tahoe. macOS Tahoe 26.2 is available around the world at the same time for everyone on all macOS Tahoe supported devices. Now I've installed this on my M4 Max MacBook Pro 16 inch, but again, it's available on all supported devices. And if you're not seeing the update, you can find it by going to your system settings, going to general and then software update. You may have to try this a few different times. If you're still not seeing it, go back, go back into software update, allow it to check again for updates, and then you should see it. If you're a beta tester, make sure that if you don't want to stay on the beta test, you turn this off, but there will be future versions as well. So you can keep this enabled if you want to receive the future beta test versions. Now, as far as the overall update, there's quite a few new features and changes. Be sure to check out the chapters in the description below. If you want to jump to any specific feature. The first change has to do with liquid glass. Apple continues to refine this and it's now a little bit better as far as overall legibility. In previous updates, we had the option to change this a little bit and change it more to a frosted style glass. So you can see that under appearance where we now have some options for liquid glass, where we have tinted and clear, but again, they've made it a little bit easier to read, even if it's on clear as well. We have a new change within airdrop. If we go into our system settings, go down to general and then airdrop and handoff, we can manage our known airdrop contacts now, or it says if maybe you're transferring to a device you're not familiar with, or maybe it's a friend's device or someone new you've met that you don't have in your contacts, you'll see it says known airdrop contacts. You will automatically appear for 30 days to people you have shared a one-time code with. So again, you can manage this, but if we try and airdrop, maybe the wallpaper from today's video, we'll scroll down here. And again, the wallpaper will be linked in the description with the iPhone version, but we'll airdrop to a device that's not known. You'll see it immediately pops up and says airdrop code required. Enter the code from the 11 inch iPad pro M4 to share with airdrop. And then on the M4 iPad pro, you'll see that if we tap, get the code, it gives you a code so you can share. And then again, recognize this for 30 days. So that's a new update to make it a little bit more secure with devices you're not familiar with. If you're on a video call and maybe you're using a studio display with the camera, your MacBook display, there's a new option when you go into something using video. So if we scroll down here, we'll go to photo booth just to show you how this works and I'll tilt the monitor down here. So you'll see, I'll tilt the monitor down. We have photo booth on the display. And if I go to my options in the top right, we can go to edge light. This is a new option that utilizes the edge of the display, sort of like a ring light. We can go into it and actually make it a different color temperature based on whatever we want, a little bit warmer, maybe a little bit colder, and then we can brighten it up as well. And it comes in from the edge to give us more light around our face. As we move our mouse to maybe the upper right, you'll see it gets out of the way so we can still see our icons. It works all the way around the display. And so it remembers that as well, based on how you've had it set. So if you leave this enabled, if we leave the video call here, go back in, maybe go back into photo booth or whatever you're using for video, it should remember that and bring in that edge light. So that's a new feature they've added in 26.2. Reminders get some nice updates. So if we go into reminders, we'll open it up here you'll see that it immediately pops up a new splash screen that says add an alarm, mark a reminder as urgent and get an alarm when it's due on your iPhone or iPad. So within reminders, you'll see the first thing here is suggested list and groceries, and it can automatically categorize the items as well. So that's part of the new update, but also if we create a new reminder, so this is a new reminder, we now have the option under the little eye here to now give it an urgent option that allows us to set an alarm. So it says, go to 17 pro max blue and allow that alarm there. So you can select the device there. It shows you where it's going to go and then you can adjust the time. You also have the option for a time zone now as well. So if you want it to alarm, maybe at 12 AM or maybe 1 AM, whatever works for you, you can have an alarm on your device. So it not only pops up a reminder, but sets an alarm to go along with it. If we go into podcasts, we've got some updates as well. So we'll open up podcasts here. And again, we'll see a splash screen that actually tells us what's new. We have new chapters. We have podcast mentions and from this episode, if we click continue, maybe we'll go into the waveform podcast here. You'll see that there's easily clickable links now that are within the episode logs here or the episode notes. So you can click on those. And then if we go into the episode itself, so we'll go ahead and play this. Let's just mute. We'll play it go into the episode here, you'll see that we've automatically got chapters that will show up. Now this works a little bit better on iPhone, but if we go into it, it says your queue is empty. Maybe it hasn't created those chapters, but on the iPhone, it actually worked right away for me. For example, if we go into this episode of criminal, let's try it again. 
We'll go in and we're not seeing it here. Now we're seeing it at the top and it automatically created the chapters. So again, it can take a moment for this to show up, but you'll see it creates those chapters automatically on its own. And now you have those included. In addition to this, you can see and follow mentioned podcasts from the player and transcript. So as someone's talking, if you've got the transcript, maybe they mention another podcast, you can then follow them directly from that transcript. If we go into Freeform, there's an update as well. Within Freeform, the first time you open it, you'll get a splash screen and it says, get creative. It says, build your board and collaborate with others. However, that's not what's new. What's new is we now have the option for tables. So you can see here, we can add a table and then use it just like we would in notes or other applications. So we have the option to add a table, making it a little bit easier to organize different areas of our work or whatever we're working on. Again, we have an update within the games app. So if we go into games, open that up, Again, we should be greeted with a splash screen where it says filter your library. We've got better controller support so you can navigate the games app with improved controller support and then you can track your challenge scores. If we click continue, you'll see a new option to organize here. So if we click on this, we have recent games and we also have name. So you can categorize this based on whatever you'd like. So on this Mac, you'll see a few different ones here and then you can change it by name. And again, you can go back home and see all of your different challenges and more. So it's a slight update, but nice if you want to filter everything. Also, if we go into the news app, so we'll go into news here and within the news app, you'll see they've simplified the sidebar here. We only have search today and news plus. In addition to that, when you go to search, you can see different options here with sports, puzzles, politics, business, and food. And we have the same thing on the sections on the left hand side. For example, sports, puzzles, business, and food. So if you want to quickly jump to that section, you can do that and it works pretty seamlessly and just makes it a little bit easier to navigate. The next one is a pretty small change. If we go into our control center here and maybe change our focus mode, if we change it to sleep, the icon is now purple instead of teal. So that's just a small UI change. If we open up Safari and maybe go to Apple, there's a couple changes. The first thing has to do with glyphs within Safari itself. Under each menu item now, we have glyphs on the side of each option. You'll see that under file, edit, view, and all of the others. So you'll have different icons that go along with different things such as open file, save as, share, etc. In addition to this, if maybe we're within Safari and we press the volume key, you'll see it's in the upper right where it actually tells us the volume or brightness or similar display items. However, if we go into full screen, this is now centered. So again, you'll see it in the top, but centered. And I actually like this better. It's easier to see. And I would like the option to bring it back here where we had it sort of in the middle before on Sequoia. I would love to see that brought back as it's a little bit odd placement in the upper right. Now, another change has to do with actually connecting multiple Macs at once. Now you can't necessarily see this on this Mac, but it's specific to Thunderbolt five Macs, maybe Mac studios. So there's a new update that lets you use the extra speed and low latency of Thunderbolt five. So with Thunderbolt five, you can now connect up to four Mac studios, allowing up to 512 gigabytes of Ram each, allowing you to run AI models more efficiently than maybe using PC GPUs. Also developers using the open source MLX framework can now utilize neural accelerators in the new M5 chipset. So that's great. Hopefully we see that in the Mac studio very soon with M5 across the board. Within the music app, there's a slight update here on the left hand side where favorite songs is now at the top. They've updated it, just making it a little bit easier to access. And the same is true on iOS 26.2 as well. When it comes to other updates, well, let's take a look at enterprise updates. And on Apple's website that says what's new for enterprise in Mac OS Tahoe 26, you'll see the latest one with 26.2, where app privacy permissions configured by device management are now shown in system settings, privacy, and security. They've also resolved an issue where the lock screen may become unresponsive on a Mac configured for platform SSO with smart card authentication. In addition to this, stability is improved when viewing log files in console with now mode enabled. So those are the updates for enterprise, not huge, but about the same amount of updates as the last version. When it comes to bugs and bug fixes, well, the first thing has to do with sidebars and apps like maps, for example. So within map, the sidebar is no longer cut off. It shows it properly. Even if we're resizing it, it doesn't change improperly and it's now working as expected. So that's something they've updated where it was a visual bug. They've also fixed an issue within music where if maybe you pre-ordered a pre-release album, sometimes it wasn't available immediately when it released. So that's something they've updated as well. 
As far as other bugs, well, Apple hasn't told us really any more than what I've already shared. So there's things that I've shared in the video with tables in free form, but the only bug fix they've mentioned was the pre-release album update. Now, as far as security updates, there's quite a few of them. Let's go ahead and take a look. On the Apple security release website, if we scroll down, you'll see the latest updates with iOS 26.2 and iPadOS 26.2. And if we take a look at macOS Tahoe 26.2, there's quite a few things here that have been updated. There's over 45 updates and you'll see things such as App Store, curl, FaceTime, file bookmark, foundation, and much, much more. So if you take a look here under Safari, for example, one of the issues was on a Mac with lockdown mode enabled, web content opened via file URL may be able to use web APIs that should be restricted. The description or the fix is the issue was addressed with improved URL validation. And then you have the CVE number and the person that submitted the issue. So lots of different security updates here. So if you're wondering if you should install this update, I would highly recommend installing macOS 26.2 as it should resolve a ton of different issues, add features, as well as a bunch of security updates as well. When it comes to overall performance, generally it's pretty good. I've been using it in beta form on this MacBook for a little while now, and things are nice and fast. You saw Safari here. If we go into system settings, open up the app store, everything is pretty quick to open. No real issues or complaints here, and it seems generally pretty smooth. I know quite a few people were concerned about battery life, I really haven't noticed many issues, at least on the betas and the RC version. But if we take a look at the last 10 days running the RC, you'll see it's not on the battery a ton as I do leave it plugged in quite a bit. But if we take a look at battery health and if we click the eye on battery health, you'll see I'm at 100% capacity. So overall, no real issues. This is a launch day M4 Max 16 inch MacBook Pro and it lasts without an issue. I've edited a few videos on it. Really no issues whatsoever as far as battery or performance. As far as upcoming releases, well, before the end of the year, we can expect a macOS 26.3 beta one. That's typically what we see every year, unless Apple decides to do something a little bit different. Then typically Apple will have a holiday vacation and not return to the office typically until January, 2026, usually the second or third week. We could expect beta two then along with iOS 26.3 beta two as well. The big update though will be in March when we expect Mac OS 26.4 along with iOS 26.4 and the new Siri 2.0 update. That's where they'll bring Apple intelligence context and all of the things they initially promised with Apple intelligence should be rolling out finally. Then of course in June, 2026 is when we can expect WWDC, and they'll show off Mac OS 27 along with iOS 27, usually in the second week of June. But again, we'll have to wait and see what they release with that as that's expected to be more of a stability update. So there's not a whole lot of other new features in Mac OS 26.2, just some nice changes, updates with things such as liquid glass, usability, and really making it a little more streamlined. I think Mac OS 26 is probably my least favorite update in a while. However, it does seem like it's getting much better. But let me know what you think of it in the comments below and how your experience is. Of course, I'll link the iPhone version of this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.